Hey there YouTube, Jimmy with Two the Top Crane. Sorry, that was probably a little uh, up close, but we got uh, some Cummins maintenance to do. We got a lot of leaves up there. Anyway, I got to change the crankcase ventilation filter. It's in here. It's a service that has to be done every, this is an oddball number. I don't know where they came up with it, but 67,500 miles is when your perform service light will pop on. Um, or that, it's actually a message. It's my understanding that uh, the trucks that run death, which mine does, you only have to change the filter that's in here. If you have, and don't, don't quote me on this, check your owner's manual, but if you have a truck that is uh, pre-def 07 to 2012, I think, then you actually have to clean the EGR valve and possibly clean the EGR cooler, which is back there. But I think on the DEF vehicles, you only have to change the filter that's in here. So I'm gonna find a place to mount my camera and uh, we'll do this together. I've never done this on one of these. So we'll see how it goes. And I'll probably get my fat head in the way a time or two, probably right now. But I already started doing this and I thought, well, man, I probably ought to grab my camera. You guys may wanna watch. First, first things first, you gotta pull the dipstick out, which I already did that. It goes in right here in this dipstick hole, the dipstick tube. Then you gotta take this cover off. And this cover, it just runs across the, covers the EGR. So it, it's purely cosmetic. I may just leave it off, I haven't decided yet. I say it's purely cosmetic. It, it may keep you from inadvertently putting your little fingers on this hot little tube. And then, uh, let's see, looks like we've got a wire clip on some long bolts back here. This is probably easier with a trim tool, but I'm using a little pry bar. I think I'm using a little pry bar. And we'll switch to needle nose. One way or another, that's gonna come off there. There, needle nose pliers. Oh, we got a little plug, we'll unhook that. A lot of these little plugs, they just have a locking tab on them. Let's fix them to climb up on the engine on this thing. I'm leaning over on a three-step step stool. Find a place to put some sockets and a wrench that I won't knock them down in there. Find some place to put my knee that I won't go through the front of my truck. Maybe I'll break it and then I won't have to reuse it. Alright, that's out. Now we should be able to release this plug. Needle those pliers again. Try this clip off back here. Now 
Alright, so we got the wiring harness out. Something is killing my knee, so I'm gonna stand again. And I'm doing this in appropriate workwear. I got uh, shorts on. I do have my logger weight hat on though. Oh, I also got uh, flip flops on, so yeah. Now there's a tube that runs off the side of this housing and it runs down to, looks like it gets eaten by the turbocharger. So the crankcase ventilation stuff that comes out of the engine goes down to the cleaner side of the turbo. And if you don't uh, change this crankcase filter, this vent filter, it will start uh, depositing oil on the compressor wheel inside the turbo. All these bolts are eight millimeters. I'm not sure what a dealer charges for this. I've been told upwards of like 400 bucks. That seems pretty ridiculous to me. I mean the part, I ordered the part on eBay. I got it for $68 and it's a actual fleet guard number. So it's Cummins approved. Actually Cummins owns fleet guard. Sure there's probably aftermarket ones out there but my truck's still under warranty and as long as I uh, use OEM parts there's nothing that they can say hey you know they can't say anything about me using aftermarket filters and stuff and that's what caused a failure or whatever but you're gonna need a deep well on these ones that have the stud on them. So far I've got a handful of these. I'm going to go ahead and set them down on the ground so I don't lose them. I'm also doing this the hottest part of the day. I should have got up early. I did this when it was cool outside. Right now it's our current summer temperature of about 9,000 degrees. If you heard that little crack, that was indeed my elbow. So this cover should essentially just pop off. Oh, oil fill cap. I'll take that out. Now this cover should just pop off and lift off to the side. And there it is. That's what we're wanting to take out. Um, I wonder how far I can wedge that over there without tearing anything up. Perfect. And this thing's probably going to be a little stuck. There's a couple, uh, get off my amp. There's a couple little tubes with some O-rings on them.
there it is. Now I'm going to set this down over here and I'll get the new one. We can compare the two. Oh, see, so far we're 10 minutes and 44 seconds into this. Uh, this is a repair that, like I said, I've heard some people say that the dealer charges close to like 475 bucks to do this. I apologize for all the flipping around, but okay, so there's the new one. You can see the filter element down inside there. It's all nice and white and clean. Then the old one, you can see it's pretty dark. So it has, and there's, there's oil residue all over it. So you can tell it's actually been filtering the oil out of the airflow, out of the, the blow by. Well, I'm gonna set this on the ground. Try to get this other one slapped in there. Okay, with everything oil or O-ring related, I always like to try to smear a little bit of oil on the O-rings before I slip anything together. And that keeps you from rolling the O-ring. We've got some oil residue right in here. That'll work good enough. Wipe up a little bit of that on our fingers and uh, lubricate the O rings with them or with it. Make sure that that's not an o-ring stuck inside there make sure it's still on that other filter nope we're good i just transferred a little bit of its color so reverse the procedure simple as that i mean i'm uh 13.4 minutes into this or 13 minutes and 50 seconds and I'm not even really trying to do it fast it's easy there's no reason to take your trucks to the dealer to have this done once I get the bolts back in it and everything situated again I'll uh, show you guys the reset procedure to get rid of that perform service indication okay I'm going to add something to this while we're while we're doing this I've got all the bolts just finger tight. I'm gonna go ahead and put my oil cap back on. No point in leaving that open any longer than you have to. Um, and the OCD in me says, keep turning that until it's straight ahead. Uh, one click too far. Oh well. Um, this is a plastic cover. So don't rattle this back on with an impact driver, even if it's a quarter inch drive impact driver. You, you could end up breaking that cover. Also, since it is an actual cover, I'm gonna treat this like I would an intake manifold or a cylinder head or a valve cover. It does have a sealing surface, or at least that filter does under it. So I'm gonna tighten this in kind of a crisscross pattern. I'm just gonna snug it up. And I'm gonna start in the center and work my way out. And the reason why you do that on uh, long flat items is it smashes the center down flat and then it works its then you work your way to the outside edges keeps things from leaking and then 
like I said, I'm not getting this thing overly tight. I'm just getting it snug. I'm not sure what the actual bolt torque spec is on this. These are pretty small bolts. So I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to use my calibrated feel. And we've been wrenching on stuff for quite a long time. And you've broken bolts and whatnot. You do start getting a feel for bolt stretch. takes care of that. I'm going to put the little EGR crossover tube cover back on, throw the dipstick back in it, and we'll jump inside and uh, do the reset. Okay, another thing I had to do while I was under here messing with stuff, the windshield washer fluid was a little low. On these trucks, your washer fluid is right next to your power steering fluid. Do not mess up and put it in there. That'd be bad. Your power steering fluid doesn't need to be washed. Windshield needs to be washed. Power steering fluid, not so much. But uh, I would really like to thank the people who said, hey, washer fluid comes in one gallon containers. Let's make the reservoir one gallon because that's exactly, I dumped the entire bottle in there and that's how full it got it. So, there's that. We'll jump inside, do the reset. I gotta fill my def tank, which that's another sore subject, but yeah, I got to throw two and a half gallons in there and should be good to go for about another thousand miles and I'll change my oil again. Okay, yeah, uh, just missed that. I'm going to shut it off. I'll restart it again, show you guys the whole perform service. See if it'll pop back on. There it is. So, to get rid of that, we're gonna shut the truck off. It's about 900,000 degrees in here instead of 9,000. But we're gonna shut the truck off. We're gonna turn the key on. We're gonna push the brake all the way once. Push the brake again. Push the accelerator down all the way to the floor, back up. Accelerator down all the way to the floor, back up. Shut the key off. Take it out. Let's see if that got rid of it. Oh, now it's just telling me my door is open. Let's go ahead and close the door. No more perform service. So I've been told that you can uh, reset that and then change the filter after the fact. Here's the thing. If you do reset that, don't forget to change that crankcase filter. It will eventually start spitting oil deposits into the turbo housing, and then it'll coat the compressor wheel with oil deposits, at which point we'll make it a lot less efficient. So don't forget to change it. And I know there's going to be people who are going to say, hey, why don't you just delete it and do all of that, and but get rid of the crankcase ventilation system and whatnot. And, and I understand people deleting their trucks and I'm probably eventually going to do this one um, because most of the issues that you have with these newer trucks is emissions related it's not, not anything to do with mechanical stuff in the engine but right now you can see I've got 69,000 miles on this if something goes wrong with it it's on their dime not on mine so if I lose all six injectors they get to pay for all six injectors. If it throws a rod, they get to pay for that. If I deleted it, I would have to tune it. And as soon as you tune these, it fingerprints the ECM and they know that you've tuned it. I've heard a lot of people, or had a lot of comments. I commented on another channel's video, a guy with a big green Dodge, he's in his early 20s. I'm not gonna mention his channel name, but he's doing a lot of stuff to his truck to make it completely unusable as a truck, which that's fine, it's his, he can do that. But it's a brand new truck. He put four inch exhaust on it, I think, deleted it, 
and at his age I think he just had enough money to buy the truck so when it coughs a park store out of the bottom end onto the ground with his 37 inch tires and 6 inch lift and he takes it to this dealership they're going to deny his warranty claim because of his tuner and then there he is with a 50 or 60 thousand dollar truck that he's got to put a 10 or 12 thousand dollar engine in well actually it'd be more for him because I know he doesn't know how to do it and lord knows he doesn't have an engine hoist big enough to put in to put a Cummins in the front of a six inch lifted truck but regardless that's why I haven't deleted if anything goes wrong with it they pay for it and I don't like buying def any more than anybody else does but you know so be it it is what it is so end rant on that now on the crankcase ventilation system they do make a kit and again you have to delete your truck but they make a kit that you can bypass that and it just vents the atmosphere I prefer to have that crankcase ventilation under a little bit of vacuum and here's why that vacuum inside the crankcase will inherently keep your seals from leaking as bad so if you just have atmospheric pressure if that's just venting to atmosphere then there is all the time a little bit of pressure inside the crankcase that's due to blow by which is the combustion process blowing past the piston rings and ended up in the crankcase there's always a little bit of that and then also the oil vapor um, from inside the crankcase due to oil splashing you know from all the moving parts so there's always going to be inherently a little pressure in there if that is vented to atmosphere and doing that it will or could potentially cause some of your seals to start leaking like your front seal your rear main seal um, some gaskets Cummins are notorious for leaking when they get older so that being said with that crankcase ventilation being under a slight vacuum then that would help alleviate some of the leaks that the Cummins inherently have it doesn't really cost you that much horsepower you know sucking that uh, byproduct out of the crankcase through the combustion process especially on a diesel I mean it eats oil anyway that's the fuel that it's got is basically an oil so it, it eats oil vapor anyway um, so to me it just makes more sense to uh, leave that connected even if this truck was deleted I'd probably still have the crankcase ventilation system hooked up the way it is just to prevent leaks in the future so hopefully I've done enough rambling um, we'll throw this up in a quick video I may even post it today but yeah there you go 20 what was it 20 minutes total even with all of my rambling about other people's trucks and crankcase ventilation and whatnot and if I would have taken that to the dealer 400 bucks so do this in your driveway it's easy to do with that said to the top crane is out